uh, welcome to everyone, uh, both internationally, locally in Cambridge, as well as Pauline, and I saw that Luca uh, was also, Asserini was also online. Carlo and I shared an office and in many respects our careers mirrored each other and we challenged each other. I left Cambridge in 2011 but we were both involved in colleges, we both did editorial work and were involved in books. But more importantly we were friends and we continued to be friends and continued to text each other. Um, and we had sort of nicknames for each other. He would call me Hello Ski and I would call him Ski. So this is a typical conversation. Hello Ski, thought you might be interested to know I exerted my democratic right to protest. And this was the Brexit march. It was all very middle class and polite. And so my response was, Ski, what do you look like? You'll have MI5 onto you. And his response, yes, I do look a bit suspect. As I said, uh, we shared the office in the back room that David now has, and Carlo and I uh, would secrete ourselves there and hopefully stay under the radar. In 2003, Diana Wood uh, was appointed as clinical dean at the School of Medicine, and she was a real um, breath of fresh air to uh, the place and to the curriculum, and had decided that the clinical course curriculum needed a, cre a complete revamp. So Yian Hughes, our professor, comes into our office and we're the designated team, Carlo and I. And wanting to make an opportunity about out of this job, uh, like all clinical academics in Cambridge, it has to lead back to Oxford. And via Rob McClure, who had contacts with Oxford University Press, Carlo and I went to Oxford to meet up with the people at Oxford University Press. Um, I can recall that he insisted that we had risotto for lunch, uh, and we certainly did. Well, out of that meeting with Oxford University Press, uh, we sort of decided that we would do the book, the Oxford Handbook of Pediatrics, but we needed an idea. And the idea came from Thomas Fair. He uh, was an Elizabethan, or just an Elizabethan, born in East Anglia. He wrote the first paediatric book in English in 1553. He wasn't actually qualified as a doctor at that time, although he had practiced medicine for 20 years. He collected his medical degree from Oxford in 1559 and was also awarded a doctorate in medicine that same year. His idea was a 56 page book that covered by problem 39 different conditions that children uh, suffered from and were exposed to. And that's what we did. We thought we want a problem based book that would be helpful. So um, we're now into the third edition. The first and second edition together has uh, globally sold over 85,000 copies in the English language. So it's a real legacy. The, the first edition was directed more towards medical students. So this was 2008. And I put the prices there because I recently bought Thomas Fair's book off Amazon for £42.74. pence. So I think this is still a good deal. Um, we got mixed reviews with that first edition and I still don't understand this review. Um, what you want is the pediatric equivalent of the cheese and onion to help steer you through the rapids of pediatrics. 
if anyone knows what that means, just tell me. But that, that was the sort of review that we had. By the time it came to the second edition, it was five years later, and we thought that the medical students that we had directed the book to for the first edition would now be practicing, coming towards the end of their training, and perhaps going into general practice. And we were pleased to get this review. I'm a practicing GP, and I could easily use this as a sole pediatric reference source for my work. Via Yian, uh, we uh, got to know Howard Balkner, who uh, used to visit London uh, every, every month uh, as editor in chief of Archives of Disease in Childhood. Uh, you probably know him now as the editor in chief of JAMA. Well, he wrote the first edition forward for us in 2008, and um, we were pleased with what he had to say. It would be particularly appealing to medical students and younger physicians. Doctors Tasker, McClure, and Asserini have done a wonderful job in ensuring consistency, clarity, and completeness. And you know that's been our target. We've also been pleased to see that the book was translated into English and Mongolian. But I think what Carlo had a real sort of tongue in cheek about was what you see on the panel on the right. Um, Oxford American asked if they could translate our book into American. So the sales of this book have not been good and they don't count it as an English language sales, fortunately. But the, the group at Seattle Children's took on the book, uh, converted it into American. Uh, it sold a bit, but not much. And this is the cover for the third edition that will come out in 2021. Um, what I want you to look at in particular on this is um, Carlo's idea here of bringing on board three young consultants, Ed Holloway, Asma Shah, and Peter Lilitos, who um, have been outstanding. Uh, and this was part of the succession plan that Carlo had for the future. We just need to find some enthusiastic young people who would move the book forward. And that's been um, one of the outputs of the COVID era. It's, it's been about three years, three, four years in the planning. Uh, we have uh, the third edition in 30 chapters. I checked the manuscript in Newnham in Cambridge earlier this year. It's been typeset in India, copy edited and indexed by OUP in the UK, proofread in Cambridge times twice, to get the manuscript into the book has taken seven and a half months with over a thousand pages. As we speak now, the book is being printed in China and the first run will be about close to four and a half thousand. In UK warehouses by mid-December and the publication date next year. Uh, I know that there's an international audience from the endocrine and diabetes world online. The first and second edition, Carlo was adamant that endocrine and diabetes were a combined chapter, and he changed his mind for the third edition. And as you can see, chapters 10 and 11 endocrinology, diabetes. Um, I think that's probably more in keeping with the British approach of the British Society of Pediatric Endocrinology and Diabetes to put these chapters together. So what would he have been uh, proud of? I, th I think he would have been really proud of this. This is the international edition um, that is going to all these different countries. I'm particularly struck by the fact that this book will go to Bhutan. Uh, and if you recall, the King of Bhutan was Wheaton trained and Oxford educated and brought in uh, the policy of happy, national happiness 
and we always had in mind to go to Bhutan out of these countries. So I end with this slide just as uh, I started with a conversation uh, about Carlo right at the beginning. Uh, tonight uh, I'd welcome you all to wet your whistle for Carlo. Um, this is me writing, Ski, back in Cambridge to tomorrow evening. How about you, in town or out? His response, hello Ski, in town. Could you bring, could you pick up a bottle of nice bourbon for me? If you see this brand, please get. Um, it's Basil Hayden's. I was able to get a bottle and we did meet mm. the following evening. So thank you very much for your attention. And this, this is my favorite photograph of Carlo. <laughs>